Hallelujah. He kept me. I'm, I know that I did not keep myself, but the Lord kept me. I haven't been so smart or, or so slick, nor have I been so good, but the Lord kept me. Can somebody just say, thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Come on and utter those words because thank you makes room for more. Say it again. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. I don't deserve it. Oh, I know some of y'all think you deserve it, but I don't deserve it. And I'm grateful for it. Thank God that we serve a real God. How many know that Jesus is real? <laughs> How I many really know he's real this morning? If you know he's real, look at somebody and tell him he's real to me. Ah, oh, y'all didn't say it like you really meant it. Can you put a little bass in your voice? And say, Jesus is real. I don't hear nobody. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh. How many know he's real? Well, well, I, I need a few people to look at somebody next to you. Tell them he's real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh yeah. What did he do? Come on, praise team. Can y'all help me? Come on, some so many people. Any ex choir members know that? That is why I need an alto, I need a soprano. Oh, in the morning he read, read. Oh, you know what he did? So many people, so many people I can't live, I can't live without that is why, that is why yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is real, is real. in the morning he real, real, oh, Jesus is real. Yes, Jump out the 
sick and shut in. <laughs> hey Amen. He is real. I got a phone call the other day and, um, and I was devastated because uh, you know stuff happens so quick and so fast and they told me Jonathan Todd had a heart attack. I said what? And, um, and, and then I, I made a few phone calls and, and it was verified that it was true and his heart was operating at 50%. And um, and I just we've been dealt so many blows and and uh, anyway he had a procedure and um, it was a successful procedure and then I looked around and he walked in the building this morning look at him look at him look at him look at him can can I get fifty people to tell the Lord thank you there he is wave wave your hand son tell the Lord thank you because some of y'all prayed with us some of y'all prayed with us. Can somebody scream, thank you? That is why I love him. That is why. Oh. He's real, I tell you. He's real, I tell you. If you need a healer, if you need a friend, he's a bad and bearer. He's a heavy load sharer. I love him, I love him, I love him. <laughs> I love him, 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 I love him. That is why. Has he ever done anything for you? Then tell your neighbor. Anybody ever been healed of any illness? Then tell your neighbor. I love him. Has he ever made a way? Way out of no way. Oh, that's enough, yeah. <laughs> that is why he's so real. <laughs> Open your Bibles. <laughs> Anybody prayed with John, JT? Just tell the Lord, thank you for hearing my prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you all for, so, oh, glory, sowing seeds last Sunday. And we're not, we're not finished yet because some of y'all missed last week. And you're going to do your best to catch up. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yes. Let me invite your attention, if I can. <laughs> to the book of Ephesians. And some of y'all ought to be happy and shouting, even though he's no kin to you, because that means that the hill is in the neighborhood. Some folk in here, you came to church and you still got some ailments with your body. 
I need about 25 people to say, I'm already healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ. Jesus throughout all ages would world without end. Amen. I want to talk about a mind-blowing God. A mind-blowing God. God can blow our mind. There are a lot of things in this life that have blown my mind. I'm sometimes blown away by the internet. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm blown away by uh, this, this new uh, feature called artificial intelligence. That, 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 that blows me away how you can just put uh, four or five words into the chat and it could craft a sentence that makes a little bit of sense. Amen. <laughs> I'm blown away, uh, sometimes I'm blown away by people. Sometimes when I see the amazing things that people do, it blows me away. <clears throat> I I'm blown away sometimes at America. Amen. When I look at uh, how this country has uh, gone through so much and, and how we uh, have, it's amazing. I'm blown away at America even today that uh, a, a country that enslaved black people, amen, I never in my wildest imagination ever thought I would live to see a black person be the president of the United States of America. That, 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 that blew my mind. Maybe y'all envisioned it. Y'all stronger than me, but that, that blew me away. I, sometimes I'm blown away uh, with things that I never thought would happen even on the uh, negative side. <clears throat> I never thought that Donald Trump would ever be president. <laughs> when that happened, after, he's, after he was publicly heard on tape saying that he would grab women by their private parts, as he was, uh, uh, so many uh, times he, 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 he ran for president, pardon me, and uh, it was proven that he had not paid taxes in all those years. So when he was elected president, that blew me away. That stunned me. That startled me. It shocked me. But I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you haven't had your mind blown <clears throat> until uh, the king of kings blows your mind. Until the prince of peace, the lord of lords, the everlasting father blows your mind. Paul says it's incomprehensible to describe the love that he has. He acknowledges that his love is so amazing, and he concludes with a doxology. Paul praises God's ability to accomplish things in an exceeding manner, abundantly, beyond whatever we can ask or think. And he goes on to say that God is so amazing that, that, that you can ask and pray for certain things and he could do that and beyond. Amen. Lord, keep my mind this morning. He, he said that, 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 that he is so powerful, potent, and, 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 and so amazing that, that, that even we... we he, even when you think of the great things that you want to see come into manifestation, the Lord can exceed and supersede that. Paul praises God's ability to accomplish exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can ask or think, attributing glory to him throughout all generations. There's so many things in our life that only God can do. Anybody ever had something that occurred in your life and you knew that was the only God can do blessing right there? Can I talk to anybody, any real people? Amen, amen, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know he's able, amen, to stop the Red Sea. We know he's able to walk on water. We know he's able to turn water into wine. We know he's able to calm 
a raging sea, but he also rescued a baby from the Nile who grew up as a prince and then became the deliverer, the liberator, and the emancipator called Moses. He gave barren women babies. He made the blind to see, the lame to walk, the dumb to talk. He raised the dead. He has not lost any power. <laughs> I need somebody to just tell your neighbor he's the same God. Thank you, Ty Tribbett. Ty Tribbett says, same God right now, same God back then. If he done it before, he can do it. Are y'all in the house? I have only one assignment today. My assignment is very simple today. And it's to convince and persuade those with, with questions and doubts in their minds about the awesomeness and the inexplicable power of the God that we serve. I want you to know that God can be trusted. I know many of us have uh, been violated in relationships and we have issues, we have trouble, we have problems trying to really engage in the authenticity of trust. But God can be trusted. Amen. You ought to say with me right now, my God can be trusted. Thank you, Solomon, the wisest man that ever walked on the face of the earth. He said in the, word, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will. I knew I had some Bible readers in here today. He'll direct your path. Amen. Yeah, I see something in this, these two verses. Uh, I see some promising potential. Say it with me. Promising potential. Verse number 20 is a loaded verse. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding, amen, abundantly above all that we ask. Oh, what a promise. Somebody say, oh, what a promise. Help me preach this thing today. Amen. Oh, what a promise we have in the God of our salvation. I need somebody in this room to just help me preach and help me inspire. There may be some doubters in your area. There may be some who are confused this morning in your region, in your vicinity. I need you to tell three people God can do it. Yeah, we serve a God. That's it. That, you got you to tell one more person. Amen. God can do it. God can do it. No dialogue, no discussion, no debate. He can do it. We don't have to wonder if he can do it, if he has the ability to do it, if he has the, the capacity to do it. He can do it. I know some of you think he can't, but I'm like Barack Obama. Yes, he can. He can do it. Amen. Some of you thinking that, that, that we, we, we engage in all of these prayers and, and, and but the truth of the matter is theologically you have concluded that, that God does not get intricately involved in the affairs of humanity. God just sits back, amen, and just watches everything without intervening. Some of you are saying, amen, God uh, does not have the power to change uh, uh, situations because he has given people free will. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I need to tell you, God not only has the desire and the will, he has the ability to bring things to pass. Somebody came in here this morning, you push your way, but I've come here today to tell you, God has the ability to heal your body. God has the ability to bless you with promotions. God has the ability to give you property. God has the ability to give you prominence. Somebody holler, he's able. And that's who you need to put your trust in. I know we put our trust in a whole lot of entities. We put our trust in our friends. We put our trust in people. We put our trust in our supervisors. We put our trust in our spouses. We put our trust in our political parties. But you need to learn how to put your trust in God. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that God, he knows how to do beyond what I expect or anticipate. Because sometimes what we have in mind is not God's best. 
I mean, I'm, just, I'm driving a little car out there now, amen, a little Ford SUV right there now. But I remember I asked God for a car, amen, a few years ago, and uh, I just wanted a car. They came and gave me a Mercedes. I said, hey, amen, that's, that's exceedingly and abundantly. <laughs> amen, above, I was even asking or thinking, amen. The promises, this promise communicates to us that God is going to take you farther or pr pardon me, I'm sorry, further than your little itty bitty brain can envision. Who am I talking to today? You showed up and this is resonating with you right now. I, I want to tell you, you're going to walk into doors you never dreamed of. Who am I talking to? You're going to sign contracts that's going to blow your mind. Who am I talking to this morning? You, you, you're going to meet people you never thought you would meet. Even right now, your name is being talked about in rooms you never entered into. Who am I talking to this morning? Who receives that? I'm trying to tell you, God is getting ready to bless your body. God is getting ready to heal you. Some of you in this room are dealing with depression right now. I've come here today to speak it into your life. It's over. God is going to give you a fresh start. God is going to allow you to move on to the next page. He's going to allow you to go to the next chapter. Can I talk to somebody here today? There is a passage of scripture in the book of Acts. Lord, keep my mind today. Acts chapter 3, it says, uh, Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer. And while they were there, a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb, that meant that he had never, ever walked. Very simple. When they saw Peter and John, they saw, here come some preachers that's supposed to have the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't got to say anything. And so they began to ask alms. He began to ask the arm of Peter and John. And Peter and John said, no, 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 look on us. And, they, and they was ex he was expecting to receive something from the two preachers. And you know what Peter and John said? They turned around and said, silver and gold, have I none? No, big man, we don't have no money for you today. Amen. But we got something better than that. <clears throat> he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm trying to tell you, it's amazing how this boy went to church. Amen. They laid him at the gate. He went looking for crumbs and got a healing. God decided to blow his mind. It's, it's amazing. I'm just trying to tell you, keep on praying, saints. Keep on trusting. Keep on being obedient to the word of God because I just need to tell somebody, I don't know who this is for, amen, but it's about 50 of you. I need to speak this into your life right now. One moment of God's favor will revolutionize your life. I drove in from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, from a leadership retreat of our church to tell somebody that the God that we serve has some, I never dreamed of blessings in store for you. Did you catch that? God has some, I never dreamed before, blessings stored up for you. In other words, there's some blessings going to happen in your life that you hadn't even dreamed of. It's going to come into fruition. In fact, some of you have already experienced a few blessings that you never dreamed of. Some of you never thought that you would have lived as long as you're living now. Because you had health issues. You had a health crisis and God kept you. Who is this for today? God is releasing healing right now in this service. God is releasing favor. God is releasing opportunity. God is re releasing prosperity. God is re releasing miracles. God is releasing liberty and freedom. God is releasing relationship healing and restoration. God getting ready to do it. Speak it into somebody's life. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder. Don't even worry about it if they look at you. Tell them God's getting ready to do it. Ah, uh, you're sitting by the wrong person. High five somebody else and tell them God's getting ready to do it. 
He's doing it in this season. He's doing it right now. Look at somebody else and tell them morning has come. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Y'all know what they say. Weeping may endure for night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy! Joy has come. Morning has come. Breakthroughs about to manifest. Miracles about to come into fruition. Bodies are getting ready to get healed. Some of you been, you're tired of being walking to the altar at somebody else's wedding, being a bridesmaid. It's your season now. I wish I had somebody here today that would go ahead and give God glory. There's some doubters that don't believe in nothing I'm saying, but you got to take God at his word. You got to believe it. There's some people right now in this room saying, I'm too old. I'm not good enough. It'll never happen for me, but I've come here today to tell you the devil is a lie. First John said, for and for said, greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. The reason you're going to overcome, the reason you're going to blow up, the reason you're going to expand is because you got some inside stuff. I just read it to you. Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Come on, somebody scream, I got inside stuff. I don't want you to beat yourself up. I don't want you to beat yourself up. Yeah, the Bible says, the Bible says how powerful faith is. Amen. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. I read that. You read it. Let me talk to somebody here today. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes we beat ourselves up too much because because we said, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. My, my faith is not where it should be. But I, I just need you. You got a whole lot of good scriptures memorized. Bless your heart. You got a pretty good teacher. I motivate you. I encourage you. You're memorizing scripture. You're reciting them. Let me add another. I'm, I hear you. 633 Matthew. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Here's one verse I want you to add to your arsenal. And it's Matthew 17 and 20. Don't beat yourself up because your faith is not what you want it to be. Keep striving. But Matthew 17 and 20 says, if you have faith as the size of the grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Lord, help somebody today. I need to tell you how big a mustard seed is. A mustard seed is is between one millimeter to two millimeters. That's not even an inch. But if you have just that grain, that small, the smallest seed, you can move mountains. That's how I know something crazy. It's about to be bananas in this church. I've been here a long time, and I know even some of you who don't think yourself as being so strong as your pastor, I want to tell you, I know you got mustard seed faith. I know that if you showed up here at all today, you at least got mustard seed faith. So you, you, I'm getting ready to tell you, get ready to have a heart of receptivity. Amen, because you don't have to have uh, faith like Paul, amen, for God to show up and show out in your life. I don't know about you, but that got me excited. Because I'm, I'm more like that man in Mark chapter 9 when he was praying for his boy to get healed. And he took him to the church and, and, and they couldn't heal him. Took him to the disciples and they couldn't heal him. Finally, he, he went to the Lord and he said, heal my boy. He's deaf and dumb. And he, I can't hardly uh, uh, really deal with him. I don't want to put him in any kind of home. But, but he's uncontrollable. He jumps in the fire. And, and, and he, said, he said, now I believe you can heal him. But help my unbelief. 
Can anybody relate to that? Lord, I believe. <laughs> but help my unbelief. <laughs> so that being said, <laughs> that, that, that being said, said you, 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 you just may qualify for the next miracle. Can you help me encourage somebody? Tell somebody on the next row, because that person sitting by you tired of you by now. <laughs> Tell somebody, you just may qualify. <laughs> now, you got mustard seed faith. Say, at least I got mustard seed faith. Tell, tell them, I got mustard seed faith, at least. Now, I need 50 people to scream, I qualify! I qualify for a miracle. I qualify for a breakthrough. I qualify for my business being blessed. I qualify for my body being miraculously healed. I qualify. I qualify. <laughs> now in the hill that is able. Can somebody scream he's able? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They played with me too much up there in Milwaukee. I'm sorry. Can somebody scream he's able. He's able. To do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think Woo. according to that power that worketh in us uh, that, that power that worketh in us that's prevailing power I'm almost done uh, somebody may be wondering how you're gonna get out of that difficult spot you said Reverend you motivated me this morning but I still got a difficult spot how, you're wondering how I'm gonna get out that bind you're saying, Reverend, you, you may, you, you, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to accomplish my dreams. Amen, Amen. because you're not going to do it. You're just going to be a vessel. <laughs> Can I read that scripture again? Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Somebody scream, God's going to do it. I'm just a vessel. You heard Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things. Don't y'all make me holler. Through Jesus Christ that strengtheneth me. Somebody scream, God's going to do it. I told you before, stop worrying and walk in the floor at night. Stop, stop posting these miserable, sad, pitiful Facebook messages. I'm going through. Woe is me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Will y'all pray for me in Jesus' name? No. No, 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 no. I told you before, stop walking the floor at night. Stop looking for an excuse to get some Hennessy. Cognac. With a little coat and Patron. Stop it. I'm coming down you. I stopped talking about I got some edibles. That's, it makes me relax. No, you need to rest in Jesus. Reb, it just tastes like candy, though. There is something sweeter than edibles. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody here today. Get you some rest. I read in the good book uh, that he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And I need to tell somebody, you're wondering how it's going to happen. God's going to use people to do it. God has the right people lined up. Woo! <laughs> He's already working out the details of your destiny. Ah, he always, he's already working out the path to your purpose. God has people on assignment to help you complete your purpose. Stop telling yourself it'll never happen for me. Stop saying that. Don't, I don't ever want you to quote this again as long as I'm your pastor. Stop, stop saying if it wasn't for bad luck. I wouldn't have no luck at all. Stop saying it's too late. It ain't never too late because God is still on the throne. Say it with me. God 
still in charge. You know, there's a scripture in 1 Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. It's, it's, it's really in the book. It's in the book. It, it's about a woman named Hannah. Uh, you know, you know, these days, you know, if a woman don't have no, no baby, she with the hip, he, she's with the hip crowd. No, I, I, you know, she, she, she's, uh, she's great for the womanist movement. Amen. But back in that day, if you didn't have any children, there was a shame associated with your name. Anybody read that? But she was married to a brother named Hannah. I don't know how he, I know it's polytheistic, a polytheistic culture, but I can't figure out how he pulled this off. Amen. Elkanah, uh, in my neighborhood, y'all know, wait, those that are watching online, listen, they, did, they didn't hire me from another town. I, I grew up on the west side in Chicago. But, and in my neighborhood, they would call Elkanah a Mac from way back. Because he had, he had two wives. I just said wife and a girlfriend that he was sneaking around with. Homeboy had two wives and they both knew about it. He was called a player from the Himalaya. He had two, I'm serious, two wives. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, one wife name was Hannah, and the other girl name was Penina. Penina was the wife that had several children. And Hannah was the one that was barren. Uh, Elkanah would always go to Shiloh, and he would bring back a present. When he go to uh, Hannah's house, he would come out uh, with one present because it was only Hannah and no kids. But when he come back, go to uh, Penina's house, he come back with all these bags, and all these presents for his other wife and her many children. Penina used to pick at the other wife. Penina used to critique, ostracize, and laugh. I don't care who you are. Amen. When people are picking at you, you get beside yourself sometimes. <laughs> Hannah decided that, you know what, I can't take the shame anymore. She went into the temple. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 1. She went into the temple and she prayed to God. She said, Lord, if you give me a boy child, I will give that child back to you. I will raise him in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And, and let me tell you, while she was praying, the priest, Eli, saw her. He came and prophesied unto her. He says, God has heard you. He said, in nine months, your body's going to start acting strange. <laughs> in nine months, in a few weeks, rather, you're going to have some mourning sickness, sickness, and in nine months, you're going to produce a baby. And I need to tell you, surely it came to pass. It came to pass. Amen. Uh, but, but I want to tell you, he didn't only just uh, give her the one child she asked for. Amen. But before you know it, now that her body had got used to pushing out babies, she had a second one. Then a third one. And then a fourth child. I'm trying to tell you, he had provided exceedingly and abundantly above all that she asked. I hope you're getting the point today. Wait a minute, some of you over the last few years or months have experienced some pain and anguish. And you have, a, you have tried to accomplish your goals. And it's not really coming out the way that you've anticipated. You know what the problem is? It really ain't a problem. The reality is you're just pregnant. You, you are pregnant with promise, pregnant with possibilities. Pregnant with business plans, pregnant with vision, pregnant with leadership potential, pregnant with financial aspirations coming into fruition, pregnant with political aspirations coming to pass. I'm trying to tell you, tell you the reason you're feeling so uncomfortable, you, you ask, you're in labor, you, you're having labor pains. And I need to tell you, God's getting ready to push out some stuff through you. I wish I had 15 people that said, Brevin, you're talking to me. I receive it. I wish I had 20 people that would say, this works for me because God is getting ready to blow somebody's mind and I'm a willing candidate for his glory. <laughs> 
Anybody willing to be a, be, be a candidate for his glory? If you're willing to be, be used by God, wave your hand. If you're willing to be, amen, a miracle uh, uh, that God's going to produce, God's going to bring it to fruition, tell the Lord, Lord, use me for your glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And then God says, I'm going to do it because I'm going to get the glory. That's what verse 21 says. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ. Jesus through all ages, world without end. Amen. So let me ask you a question. Why wouldn't God come through for you? Amen. Because his name is at stake. Oh, I wish I had somebody here today. Why wouldn't God come through? It only gives him glory. Let me tell you something. That's why, uh, uh, you know, let me tell you, it was on the 3rd of September. It was a day that I remember. Come on back here. No, that was the day that I made a prophecy in this church. And I said, God is going to do some amazing things in the next 52 days. Some of you sitting right here seen him work. Oh, I wish I had somebody that don't mind being a public witness that he, he worked in my life. He worked among my family. He worked among my friends. He worked in my church. Uh, anybody be a witness this morning? That's why I didn't lose an ounce of sleep. Amen. When I prophesied on the 3rd of September about a major move of God, uh, over the next 52 days, the reason I didn't uh, even flinch is because Ira J's name wasn't on the line. If God had not have come through, amen, the Lord would have looked bad. I wish I had somebody here this morning. Amen. You need to know, amen, my brothers and sisters, amen, God is going to use your dilemma. Amen. To bring great glory to his kingdom once he delivers you. Amen. Does anybody know that he is the same God? Who am I preaching to that almost wanted to quit? Who am I preaching to that almost threw in the towel? Who am I preaching to, amen, that, that almost walked out, almost gave in, almost gave up? But I've come here today to tell you, hang on in there. Amen, because God is able. Yet can we, by faith, just continue to believe that he is able? Can we continue to believe by faith? Uh, can we continue to praise God for the better than expected blessings? Amen, God is getting ready to show out. Better than expected relationships. Better than expected financial condition. Better than expected uh, medical uh, report. Let me drop this on you. If you're going through a season of loss, a season of disappointment, going through a bad breakup, I come here today to tell you just because you are a child of God, don't you know God is working it out for your good? Don't you expect to come out the same way? Expect to come out better than you were before? Is there anybody here that can be transparent this morning? I'm not going to get in your video, but is there anybody that's dealing with something this morning? You can stand if I'm talking to you. Receive your breakthrough this morning. I'm not going to ask you to tell nobody what you're going through. I'm not going to ask you to tell anybody uh, what you're praying for. I'm not going to ask you to tell anybody uh, what you are encountering. Uh, but I need to tell you, God told me to tell you, uh, get ready for the increase. Uh, God uh, told me to tell you, uh, life's got to get a little better. Uh, life's about to get a little sweeter. Uh, life's about to get more joy. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I need you to look at somebody uh, and tell them, uh, it's about to get better uh, in my home, uh, with my health, uh, in my heart, uh, in my family, uh, in 
my fitness, uh, in my faith. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, you may be going uh, through a dark Friday, uh, but I've come by here today to tell you, uh, be encouraged, uh, because Good Friday uh, came before the resurrection. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, is there anybody here uh, going to keep the faith? Uh, is there anybody here uh, going to keep trusting? Uh, is there anybody here going to keep holding on? Going to keep holding on? Going to keep holding on? Get ready. God, getting ready to blow your mind. I dare about 25 of you all who really allow this message to resonate. I dare you to start praising God right now. I dare you to start shouting right now. Like you can see it, like you can envision it, like you... Hey! Yeah! 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 Hallelujah! My, 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 Let me extend the invitation today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.